Christmas jumpers are optional, but please do if you can, really. I will next Sunday morning wear one of mine, uh, just so that you don't feel foolish. Um, so next Sunday morning, and obviously at the watch next service as well, if you want to wear a Christmas jumper, please do so. Uh, as I was saying, the social events this morning after the service, thanks for all who have been uh, preparing that. Uh, we'd be delighted to have you come across for that after the service. These, I think, are all the intimations for this morning. Let us come and worship the Lord. In Advent, heaven came to earth. Now let us come and worship the new King in all his majesty. When we sing, heaven comes close. Amen. So let us join our voices in song this morning as we sing our opening hymn, hymn 291, When Out of Poverty is Born, 291.
season of wonder. O Lord, from the depths I cry out to you. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ear be attentive to my plea. Lord Jesus, you judge in equity and free. You, your people Israel went caught in sin. Your advent is the good news we need. We ask for your forgiveness and for your mercy in Jesus' name, that we might be righteous and your praise may be on our lips as I remember your forgiveness. We ask the Holy Spirit to search our hearts and reveal any areas of unconfessed sin. Merciful God, forgive us our sins and bring us out to everlasting life through Jesus, your Son, our Saviour. God of mercy, you have promised to forgive those who truly repent. Help us to accept your forgiveness and dwell in us by your Spirit. To Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning as we sing our Advent hymn, hymn 282, Christmas is coming, we will sing the three verses and we will light the three candles. As I said to you last week, there has been a request that we do not light Advent calendars, candles this, this year um, as a sign of our unwillingness to be part of the conflict in the Middle East. I have to say that having thought deeply about it and having spoken to a number of you, I think the consensus is we should light these candles as a sign of Christ's light coming into the world, a light that brings peace, not conflict. So while in some places the lights may not be lit, we will continue to do that as a sign of our commitment to love and to peace for all humankind. So let us sing in 282, the first three verses, Christmas is coming. Come, wisdom of God, 
Come, Christ our Lord. Come, Lord, with your peace and power. Come to our lives and strengthen us. Come, wisdom of God. Come, Christ our Lord. Come, Lord, with your light and love. Come to our darkness and enlighten us. Come, wisdom of God. Come, Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ, the wisdom of God, is the light of the world, a light that no darkness can quench. Amen.
Luke 1, 46 to 55. Mary saw. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deals with, with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down the rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped to serve Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and to add his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Let us come together in our prayers for peace. And today's prayer for peace comes from the website of the Xavier's University, the Jesuit University of Cincinnati in the United States. Let us pray. Father of all mercies, we pray for the families who have fled their homes in fear. We lift up the mothers and fathers who have escaped with only their children, leaving everything else behind. Their country has changed, their lives will never be the same, and they are afraid of the future. Lord, you are the God who heals. Please bring your comfort and healing to those who are hurting. We lift up the communities who have taken in refugees and displaced people, even though they may be struggling themselves. We thank you for their generosity and compassion towards those in distress. Lord, you are the God who provides. We pray that timely help and support will reach all those in need. Father, there's so much pain and conflict across the Middle East. We pray for leaders throughout the region and ask you to turn their hearts towards peace. As our leaders and those around the world consider how to respond, please grant them wisdom and insight. Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. We pray for an end to the violence and the bloodshed and ask you to bring a new dawn of peace across the Middle East. Amen. And of course, at the moment, we are so focused on Israel Gaza. However, we must, must never forget the conflicts taking place elsewhere in Ukraine, in Sudan, and so many other parts of the world. Let us sing again our hymn 285 The Angel Gabriel from Heaven came. 285. <laughs>
Maybe it's because I'm getting older. Don't answer that. Or maybe I'm melting. But the sheer poetry of Isaiah and the beauty of Mary's song resonate much more with me these days than they used to when I was younger. Maybe I just got more time to contemplate their words nowadays. Isaiah was offering a song of hope and a return to good things after the Jewish people had been freed from their exile in Babylon. And we read him say these words. The Lord says, I love those who do what is right. I hate it when people steal and do other sinful things. So I will be faithful to my people, and I will bless them. I will make a covenant with them that will last forever. Their children after them will be famous among the nations. Their families will be praised by people everywhere. All those who see them will agree that I have blessed them. Hearing these words, how can you not feel uplifted, supported, and loved by the Lord? And Mary echoes those words in one of the most beautiful passages in the Holy Gospels. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all nations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty has done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath shewed strength to his arm, and he hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. I chose to read it this time from the King James Version of the Bible because sometimes the language of the 17th century carries with it a poetry that we lose in modern translations. Through these words we sense something of the faith of Mary, mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, the woman who would be ever present during his earthly life. Hers was a love that only a mother can offer. An unconditional love, one that took her from a small village in Galilee to the centre of Judaism and on a journey of faith from tradition to the new world of Christianity. A world turned on its head by the child she gave birth to in that stable in Bethlehem. Just as an aside, I have a suspicion that if we actually heard Mary's song, it would sound slightly different. Not just because of the voice, because I think that her female voice would have said words much softer and much more focused on the babe that she carried, and less concerned about the world of arms and armies. But that's just my thought. It is so important not to overlook the words of preparation that take us through Advent to the birth of our Lord. The world is always in a hurry to get to Christmas. It starts now sometime in late September, early October. The aisles of the shops, all of a sudden, the festive aisle, or the, what's it called, the seasonal aisle. They, in all of our supermarkets and before we know it we're already thinking Christmas long long before any of this properly begins. The world and we would do well to slow down and savour the days that lead up to the celebration of Jesus' birth. We could all get caught up in the excitement of shopping, the present buying, 
children's parties, all of that, and all of that's good. I'm not going to be a bar humbug. I have the ability, trust me, to be a bar humbug. But I'm not. All of that is good. And seeing Christmas through a child's eyes, the wonder, the joy, the amazement, these are good things too. We should never lose that. But, why hurry? We can take our time. None of this, none of this would have existed but for the faith of one woman who heard the call of her Lord and accepted her role in saving the world through the child she gave birth to. The world may not recognise the importance of Advent, of patiently waiting, but we ought to savour these moments, recognising each part of the Christmas story and all who played a part in creating the world that we live in today. It's so important that we take our time and not rush to Christmas Day, but savour the days of Advent, the days of preparation, just as much as we do Christmas itself. Amen. And may God add his blessing to these words. Our next hymn is our communion hymn and we will sing the first four verses before communion and then we'll sing the last four verses after communion. So the first four verses of hymn 664. Here, O oh my Lord, I see thee face to face. 664.
our communion liturgy this morning comes from a book by the Reverend David Austin that I have used previously at this time of year of material with a Scottish focus goes by the title that is great, Build a House. Let us build a house of tears and cries and laughter, prayers of faith and songs of grace. Let us build a house where love is found in wine and wheat, a banquet hall on holy ground where the love of God through Jesus is found in time and space as we share in the feast that frees us. If you're familiar with the responses, please join with me as I say the following. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to do so. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Raise high the roof beam carpenters. Let there be a shelter here for the one who shelters us. A door so wide to delight the king. Let him be the keeper of all the keys, and him the herald who summons its soft whisper soft and laced with thunder. Let his voice prevail. Enter all into the joy of your Lord. Let there be a shelter here for the ones like us, in our tattered coats. Let us claim our place at the table, won at the cost of nails. Here, let our tongues be loosed in the praise of the angels and all the risen, as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy God, Lord of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the heart. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he. Have we not heard his son steps? Every moment and every age, every day and every night, he comes, he comes, ever comes. Blessed is he. He is bread for those who hunger and water for the thirsty, sure footing for the lame, ruler of all things. He is the maker of new lands and the mender of ruins. He is a shade in the heat of our battles and rest for the weary. He is the moment of truth and the memory of gleefulness. He is the breaker of chains, where hatred with its package comes, he forbids delivery. Blessed is he. He is the teller of tales we cannot live without. Shaper of dreams we cannot ignore. Raise high the roof beam carpenters. Make strong the walls, you living stones. Lift up your voices. We declare again, great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Until that day breaks, and essentially shall kneel at his feet. Let us build a house where love is found in wine and meat, a banquet hall on holy ground. Let us ask the spirit of love and might to enter the house and give a sacred force to what we do now, and a sacred vitality to the wheat and wine. May they become our gifts to the King. May they speak to our hearts of his gift to us. Amen. Waiting for the sword of Caesar, he gathered his friends around him for a final meal. The ancient and holy rites of the Jewish nation, the Passover. He broke the brittle bread and pointed his friends towards what he was about to do. This is my body. Remember me. He lifted the cup. He pointed them forward. He too would be lifted up for you, for me, for all. This is my blood. Remember me. Let us build a house to tears.
for the swords of Caesar. A house that cries for the call we make from a deep heart's core. A house of laughter for the resurrection. Mischief waiting to splinter the stone they will roll away in vain to contain him. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Lord, how the linen sparkles on your table, and the work of your hands makes beautiful the wood. What our days have woven in us, what our life has made us, rarely rises to simplicity like this, rarely reaches such a neatness. The dust of the road behind us clings to us, leaving its mark. Our lives are all too often rumpled and disarranged. But we would offer to you now what is longing to be smooth and ordered, unquiet hearts that long for stillness, unfocused energies that need direction, hungers the world cannot meet. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, how the silver shines as the cup of love goes gleaming from hand to hand. We know how rarely we offer one another gifts that are so untarnished. Our listening to each other is tainted with disinterest. Our loving is discoloured by the need to dominate. We have mastered neither giving nor receiving. But we will offer to you now what is wanting in us. For your wounded hands to bless and heal and to make to glow again. Lord, have mercy upon us. But how the loaf we break fits every hand that takes it. Day after day we handle things too heavy to be carried easily. Disappointment and defeat, rejection and regret, failure and frustration. But we would offer to you now our knowledge that our hands are empty. Our amazement that you are the one who holds the galaxies of innumerable stars in the hall of your hand. And so you hold us. And we trust you today and every day. Amen. Remembering his work of passion and pleading his eternal sacrifice, we follow his example and obey his command. Send down your Holy Spirit to bless us and these gifts of bread and wine, that the bread which we break may be for us the communion of the body of Christ and the cup of blessing which we bless, the communion of the blood of Christ, that we receiving them by faith may be made partakers of his body and blood with all his benefits to nourish us and help us grow in grace to the glory of your most holy name. And here we offer and present to you our very selves to be a living sacrifice dedicated to and fit for your acceptance through Jesus Christ our Lord. According to the holy institution, example and command of our Lord Jesus Christ, and as a memorial of him, we do this. Who on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do so in memory of me. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, Grant us your peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which is given for you and his blood that was shed for you. Take, eat, 
This is the body of Christ, which is broken for you. Do this, remembering him. Taste and see that God is good. This cup is new covenant, sealed by Christ's blood, which was shed that the sins of many might be forgiven. Drink from it, all of you.
Not a cheap peace, not an easy peace, but the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each one. Let's take a moment to share the peace together.
to support them. We give you thanks for our homes and our loved ones, for the freedom and the peace that is ours. May we be sensitive to the needs of those around us and be of help where we can. God, give strength and courage to all who are unwell, to those caught up in accidents or acts of violence. We remember those who have lost their freedom and liberty. We pray especially for all who are those arrested for their political or religious beliefs. We give thanks for all who seek justice and truth, especially when faced with oppressive regimes willing to suppress that very truth. And now, Lord, in the silence of our hearts, we bring before you all those we know of in need of your care, your compassion, your comfort, and your love at this time. Eternal light, shine in our hearts. Lord, we rejoice that you have freed us from the slavery of sin and death, and brought us to the glorious liberty of being called the children of God. We rejoice in the gift of eternal life, and pray for friends and loved ones departed. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour and Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us close our worship this morning. In hymn 249, we have heard a joyful sound, 249.
and you sent your Son at Advent to restore and ransom us. We pray that you would make us like those who dream, that our lives would reflect your heart to others in this season, that we would remember those less fortunate, and God, that you would make us your hands and feet for service. The Lord bless you and keep this Christmas. The Lord make his face to shine upon you in this season of hope. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. All this we ask in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit.